Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you ready for some blessing today? The word always brings blessing. Hallelujah. Today we're talking about God's will is to heal. And I want to just raise a question with you. There are so many today who are asking, is it God's will to heal? Maybe they've asked many times, but there's been no answer. And so our circumstances tend to dictate our theology, and we say, well, maybe it's not always God's will to heal. You know, I can remember years ago, belonging to a certain group, denomination, and we would go out, a few elders, and we'd take oil, and we'd anoint people. And we'd say, well, if it's God's will. You know, that's not biblical. When it comes to healing, we need to have Scripture, the Word of God, and it needs to be biblical. Our faith and belief needs to be based on what the Word of God says, and not man, our, our circumstances dictating what we think. So we're going to take a look at what God says. Go with me to your Bibles. To Luke chapter 5, verse 12. Now here's an encounter of the man with leprosy coming to Christ asking for healing. And he says this in verse 12. And it, it happened when he was in a certain city that a, behold, a man who was full of leprosy just have leprosy his whole body was eaten up with leprosy full of leprosy that's the decaying of the flesh the rotting of the flesh on the bone fingers missing nose missing ears rotten flesh and he fell on his face and implored him say Lord clean the question is is he verse 13 it says and he put out his hand and he touched his filthy sores come on he not put off by anything you have he's attracted by what you could be in God's grace he's not looking at where we've been he's not looking at what the mess is right now in your life he sees you through the eyes of grace of what you can be and are going to be and declares that you are you know leprosy might look different ways the other types of leprosy and sin that we're in today I notice, notice what he says when he touched him. In verse 13, he says, I am willing to be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy left. Wow. Not only did the leprosy leave, the body was completely restored. New skin, new body parts, completely restored. What a Savior. Come on. What a God that we have. Now, the tense of the verb here where he says, I will, it means, of course I will. Of course I will. You can't just have one time that he said, I won't. Find me in the Bible where it ever says, I won't, when you ask him. I won't do it. 
he always replies in some way. You can't find that. The Bible says that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And so if he would say back then, of course I will to that man, he will say, of course I will to you and me. Many are asking for healing, but they don't know if it's God's will. And so there's doubt. And that is one of the things that you have, you have to not have when you're asking, no doubt. You can speak to that mountain in Mark eleven twenty four, and don't doubt in your heart, and it will be done for you. And yet we don't do the same thing with salvation. We don't say, well, Lord, you, you can save this person if it's your will. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3, 8 to 10, that God's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to a saving knowledge. So we know it's God's will to save us. Why do we do that? something different with healing? Both are done by faith. When we accept the Savior, we believe on Him. The moment we do, something begins to happen in us and we're born again. And by faith we receive that and we begin to be transformed. That's by faith through grace. But so is healing. Now we've separated that out. I want you to go with me to Psalms 103. And I want you to hear this benefit. I'm going to pick it up, uh, Psalms 103, verse 2. It says, Bless the Lord, get not all. Somebody say his benefits. We want them all. Can you say amen? Who forgives all your iniquities and who heals your diseases. Is that what it says? All of your diseases. Deems your destruction. That's a saving healing God. Now, it, what it's saying to us is that both salvation and healing are a benefit of the cross. In fact, in the New Testament, it says in Titus chapter 3 verse 5, we're saved or made whole by washing, regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to bring that to us. Complete work of the cross, complete work of salvation, includes physical healing. So, but what we've done is we've tended to separate that out. So, let me just take this further because I really want you to get this. I want you to picture yourself standing at the cross on Calvary with Christ hanging on that cross. And you can see his body is lacerated. It's bleeding. The crown of thorns is on his forehead. His face is covered with blood. And you look up into the face of Christ and you ask him, is it your will for me to be saved? That's almost disrespectful, isn't it? Because why is he on that cross? He's on that cross because it is his will for us to be saved. And he's given his life so that we can be. All right, now I want you to change over to the whipping post. Come on. He's on that whipping post and his flesh is being cut and shredded you see those whips had pieces of glass and metal in them crack every time that they were he was lashed with that it gave multiple cuts on his body 39 strikes 39 lashes his face is bloody he's writhing in pain and he looks at you through bloodshot eyes and you ask him, Master, is it your willing for or is it your will for me to be healed? And you know what his answer is? It's no different than the cross. Of course it is. Of course it is. That's what he said to the man with leprosy. Of course it is. It hasn't changed. He was whipped and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. It says in Isaiah fifty three, and by his stripes. All right, now, in Peter, it quotes that in 1 Peter chapter 2, and it says this, By his stripes you have been healed, past tense. In other words, you were healed 2,000 years ago. How shall he not freely give us all things? Go with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 32. God's will is for us to be healed. 
All right, we're over at Romans chapter 8, verse 32, and here's what it says. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Does that include healing? Freely give us all things. He paid such a great price for this benefit, and yet it's not embraced by many churches. Some people have the idea, you know, Sometimes he heals, and sometimes he don't. We got all these false ideas that cancel faith. We are to believe he is to manifest. How do we receive healing? Let me give you a couple examples from Scripture. Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. Two blind men came to him. Now, I want you to get this. They're fortunate that they found each other because they're blind, right? Right? So if, if you're going to be blind, it'd be good to have a buddy. You know what I mean? At least you got somebody to help you. And so the two of these guys came together and said, you know, we're hearing about this guy, Yeshua. Let's find him because maybe he'll heal our eyes. And you know the Bible says, if two of you agree on anything in my name, I will be in your midst. So how many know when these two men, blind men, came to that agreement, Christ determined to be in their midst. And so they found themselves with him, and uh, he said, what do you want me to do for you? We want our eyes restored. We want our eyes healed. Come on. And so he, Christ asked this question. Do you believe? Did you know that the word in the Greek here for faith can be translated trust, faith, or belief? The word is pistos. And, and so this could be translated, do you trust I can do this? Do you have faith I can do this? Or do you believe I can do this? Be it done according to your faith, and their eyes were healed. The centurion, Luke chapter 7, 1 to 10. Be it done unto you. The centurion comes, a servant is sick. He asks him to heal his servant. Lord, you don't even need to come under my roof. Said your word. And, and just like I'm a general, and I can give a word, and my men will carry it out, you're a man of, of great authority. You, your angels will carry it out. Come on. Just give a word, and your word will go heal my servant. And Christ is like, man, I've found this kind of faith in all of Israel. Be it done unto you according to your faith, sir, at that very hour. <coughs> Interesting it says that because it wasn't instantaneous. It was within the hour. You know, a miracle is when it's instantaneous. A healing is when um, it's not instantaneous, but maybe it's a process over time. But either way, we're to believe for the healing and stand for it until it comes. Amen? Jairus' daughter, Mark chapter 5, verse 36. He asked uh, for him to come. His daughter is, uh, is dying. And before they can get there, a woman comes and kind of interrupts and touches the hem of his garment. And he says to her, uh, your faith has made you whole. And then they get word. They get word that Jairus' daughter has died. And Christ has something very interesting to say. He says, sir, come on. J Jairus, you know, he was, he was uh, the chief or the president of the synagogue. And so, that's all right, sweetheart, bring it up. It's okay. Thank you. And so he says to Jairus, who's a man of great authority, don't be afraid. Your doctor has given you a death sentence. Your doctor has told you you have cancer and you're not going to live. And, God, and Christ is still saying the same thing. Don't be afraid. Don't base your faith on fear. And he goes on to say, perfect love cast out fear, for fear hath torment. How many people are tormented by doctor's diagnoses? And perfect love cast out fear. Do you believe God loves you enough to heal you? How shall he who did not spare his own son, but freely gave him, not freely give you all things? Do you believe he loves you enough? When you do, you get your healing. I believe he loves us enough. There are three reasons why people do not get healed. I want to share that with you. The first one we've been talking about. We don't know if it's God's will 
And so we stand in unbelief. Faith begins when we know God's will. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says this, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds that you might prove what is the good and acceptable will of God. It doesn't say partial will of God. half heart It's the will of God. God's perfect will for you and me is to be made whole. Part of the gospel. It includes mind, body. And so we need to have that renewing of our minds. They get rid of that idea that sometimes God heals, sometimes He don't. Because what happens when you have that kind of, of, of mindset is that you're thinking, I'm, a, I'm among the group that He's not going to heal. And, and so it cancels faith. This idea of the mind being renewed, some of us have a filing cabinet in our mind. And in that filing cabinet are all these false ideas that cancel our faith, like sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. If it's God's will, I'll be healed. And, but, you know, inside we're thinking, but it's probably not his will for me. You know, we need to replace those false concepts with the truth of God's word. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. So the more we hear the word, the more we're going to be embracing what God says. Well, what happens? I'm, I'm praying and the symptoms are still there and I'm not getting the breakthrough. Well, here's what you do. Your doctor will give you increase the dosage of your medication if you go to him. Why don't you increase the dosage of the Word of God and take it more frequently and claim the promises that all talk about healing and feed upon them and meditate upon them. They'll relieve. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. He said his word and healed their diseases. Look at this. Most disease is focused on body parts or on organs of the body. Heart disease, heart failure, congestive heart failure. He said his word to heal their disease. Why don't you ask the word of God to come into that body part that needs to be healed? Father, I'm embracing what you said about healing for the heart. And I'm receiving the word of God into that body part. And the Word of God will heal the body part. Come on, it's the benefit of the cross. This is a new way to pray. Wow. We can release the Word of God into any part of a person's body. The second reason people don't get healed is they don't understand that faith works by grace. What is provided by grace is received by grace, and it is by grace you are saved. Ephesians 2.8. And, and so you don't work up to it, you don't earn it, you don't get out in the street like in some countries and beat yourself with a whip or a chain to try to somehow show God that you're worthy. Listen, that's already been taken care of on the cross. And so healing is received in the same way your salvation is received. It's by faith in the work, completed work of what he's already done on the cross. How do we follow the plan of God? Well, sometimes we don't. And sometimes that's the reason why we get in the messes we're in. Not everything that happens to us, you know, people say, here's a false idea. Everything that happens is the will of God. You're, you're messed up and had a bad accident. Must have been the will of God. But you know what? They forgot, forgot to tell the whole story. The guy was driving down the freeway, eating a cheeseburger. He dropped it on the floor, and he's reaching down trying to find that cheeseburger and gets in a bad accident. Whose fault's that? Was that God's fault? No, you dummy. You shouldn't be reaching down looking for the cheeseburger. Got yourself all messed up and in a wreck. Some of the things we bring on ourselves, come on, tell the truth. There's some people out there that have worse things going on. You get into pornography, your marriage is falling apart, bad things are happening in your life because the things that you're involved with and doing, you can't blame God for the consequences of the things that you get yourself involved with. But what you can do is turn to Him in His mercy and in His grace and let Him set you free from the bondage so that you can walk in the freedom that He's offering. Amen? Hallelujah. Good news for healing today. Healing is, number one, a benefit of the cross. 
Number two, it's offered by grace through faith. And number three, faith comes for healing by the word of God. God's answer has not changed. Like the leper who came to him and he said, is it your will to hear to heal me? And he said, of course it is. He's still saying, of course it is to you and me. You know, I want to tell you a story. There are many people who are without hope. They've accepted, you know, it's almost like doctors occupy, for some people, the place of God. Whatever the doctor says, man, that's it. You got cancer, you got a terminal diagnosis, you know, that's all she wrote. You got six weeks, okay, that's gonna better make your plans. That's that's how long you got. I was doing some chaplain work years back. Marge and I went uh, out to, she was a volunteer. She went with me this one night. And uh, we saw this 28-year-old mother. And so I began to talk to her. She had a tube that went down her nose into her stomach. And uh, she had colon cancer, and the colon could not process food. And so she would get sick. So she would eat to try to get some, some nourishment, and then... With this tube, they would pump the food out of her stomach so that she wouldn't get sick. And so in talking to her, she told me that her aunt had cancer, grandma had cancer, a lot of the women in the family had cancer. And so I talked to her about generational curses, how the iniquity of the fathers are passed in the third and fourth generation. And so we got the family together in the living room, and we brought that to the cross because Here's what it says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, 28, 29. It says that we have a new inheritance or lineage that goes through Christ to Abraham. So we get all the blessings of Abraham and not the curses of our forefathers. That's the benefit of the cross, right? And so we took authority over that thing. And I gave her a father's blessing. So that was told about a week later. She's in the hospital and she's bleeding out. And the only thing they can do is pack her um, so that they can try to make her comfortable because she's dying. And something inside me said no. And so I went to go see her as a chaplain. And uh, when I got there, you know, the, the, the sister, the aunt, different ones were there. And uh, I closed the door and I said, listen, Rosie, I, I, I want to talk to you about what's going on. I want to talk to you about healing. Would that be okay with you? She said, that would be good, chaplain. I said, do you believe in healing? Yes, I do. I said, I'm going to close this door because there are some people who would not agree with what I'm going to tell you. So I closed the door, you know, keep the doctor out, right? Because they already told her she's dying. Just accept it. I said, listen, you don't have to accept everything you're being told. There was a woman in the Bible who had an issue of blood and she was dying. And it says she spent all she had on doctors they couldn't do anything for. You're kind of like at that point. But it says she heard and believed that if she could somehow touch the hem of Christ's garment, she would be healed. You know, it, it says in Malachi, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. But in the original it says healing in the tassels of his garment. And so she said, if I can just touch those, I'll be healed. In fact, in Mark, it says uh, that many people were doing that. A lot of people touched him that day, but they didn't get healed because they didn't touch him with faith. They might have bumped into him, but it wasn't the touch of faith. And so she prayed, you know, in her heart. And so, do you know, Christ got just barely close enough to where she could touch those tassels. And she reached out and touched them. Healing virtue went out of his body, and she was healed. I said, sister... Can we pray with you that Christ will come just close enough today in this hospital room that you can touch the hem of his garment and you can be healed? Oh, yes, she said, I, I want that. And so we prayed, you know, and, and, and Lord, we're believing by faith you can heal this. You've done it before. Of course you will. Come on. And so we prayed the prayer of faith. I said, now look. Here's the thing. You can act in faith and believe that he's touched you and do what you think he wants you to do, or you can just stay here and accept what they're telling you. I got to go. Have a good day. 
left the room. You know what she did? She called the nurse in and she said, take this thing out of my nose. Take out this IV. I'm going home and I'm going to have dinner. The nurse told me later that she went home and ate and didn't have any problems. He came just close enough for a touch the hem of the garment. How many know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? If you'll come by faith and touch the hem of his garment, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings over your life, and you can be set free and healed and restored, and I don't care what man says. That's the truth. That's the gospel. And we need to get that in our spirit. And don't listen to outside sources when the Word of God says, listen to this, 3 John verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. Does it say, Beloved, I wish above some things? All things. How important is this to God? I wish above all things that you would be in health and you'd prosper. Is it God's will to heal and restore Above all things, it's His will. God wants us to begin to believe the Word. Now look, some of these scriptures I've given you today, they're like fruit on the tree. God wants us to reach up as you hear these and these scriptures are speaking to you. He wants us just to reach up and grab that fruit and say, it's mine. Above all, th I'll take that. Beloved, forget not His benefits who forgives your iniquities and heal your diseases. I'm going to pluck that one. That's mine. I'm taking it. What truth did you get today that God wants you to pluck and take home? Because they're healing. He'll send His Word. And He'll heal things in your life. He'll restore. Then you'll, then you'll have a testimony and you can tell somebody else they, cut, they need to hear the living Word of God for their lives because by His stripes we can be healed. We're already healed. We just have to claim it by faith. Now, there, there may be, you have my permission to copy the outline I gave you. There may be somebody that you know that needs some fruit from that tree. Tree life. Pass it on. This sermon will be on our channel, our YouTube channel, later this afternoon. And the YouTube channel is Book of Acts Now Discipleship. You go there and look for the sermon title, which is, His Will is to Heal, and it will be there. You can even share it. Click on Share, and you can send it to somebody that needs to hear it. Let's encourage people to have faith in God. Do not forget. It's interesting that, that if you look at Psalms 103, why does it say forget not His benefits? Because God knew we would. So I say, listen, I'm telling you in advance, I'm going to give you some awesome benefits that includes your sins being forgiven and your body being healed or restored, and I don't want you to forget it. Because I said what I meant, and I meant what I said. Come on. Somebody needs to pick that fruit. That word. He'll send his word. He'll, where do you need to apply it? What body part needs to be ministered to? Pick that fruit and apply it. And send it to that body part. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It can cut and remove cancer from a person's body. It can restore a person who has diabetes. It can restore their pancreas and give them a brand new one. The day's going to come. I believe the day's going to come. When we're not just going to preach this here. We're going to get a tent. We're going to set it up out here somewhere and... Brownwood, and we're going to have a healing revival and preach about healing and tell all the people to come in that need healing. Wouldn't it be great if God just emptied the hospital and they had a difficult time because they didn't have enough patients? <laughs> Hallelujah! That would be good. Well, we're going to close. And um, if you need healing, you need a touch from God today. Anything in your life that needs healing, I want you to come up. We didn't do the offering. Um, go ahead and... Do you have a song you can put on, Mike? Okay. Just slow. Mike's going to put on a song, uh, bring up your tithes and offerings. We forgot to do that. But also, if you need a touch from God, you, you've decided to pluck some of that fruit today and you want healing, 
come up here and we'll pray for your healing. No, no sense hearing about it if you can have it, right? Amen. God is so good. He wishes above all things that we'd be made whole. By grace, through faith. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord, and we bless your name in this house. Is that coming up? Oh, just join me in singing this chorus. We love you, Lord, and we lift our voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Again, we love you, Lord, and we lift our voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. How can we pray for you, sister? So I just want you to say with me, Heavenly Father, Kathy, come up here. I'm at. I'm rejecting the diagnosis. No cancer. I have life, and I have healing. Paid for. And I receive this word to my body. And they'll have to give you grace. When they find there's nothing, they'll be I curse every seed of cancer. Command it to go out and leave. Healing come in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The seed of life come in. Shalom, come in. Sickness, affliction, get out. Strengthen her body, oh God. Strengthen her. We're just releasing right now, releasing right now the healing that comes. And you know what Christ is saying? Of course I will. Of course I will. And Lord, take all fear. We command fear to let go and go out. All fear, go out. Go out. Fear of death, go out. Fear of sickness, go out. Fear of man, go out. The perfect love of God, come in to cast out fear. I bind and cast out fear right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. You know, the last thing he said on the cross. It is done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just keep on giving God glory. It is done. Amen. Amen.